Starting the virtual media. Hey, I showered for you guys today. I hope you guys appreciate that. I don't shower very often for people for media day, but I did for you people today uh, all over the world. The first question I want to ask you is about the event as a whole. Obviously, coming from the background you have in MMA and the UFC, they do things a lot differently here in Trilla. They've obviously got live guests. There's performances around. What do you make of the whole fight week so far? And are you excited for the, the event as a whole rather than just the, the, the fight at hand? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's a fight, right? It's not it's not an event for me. Um, if I was a fan or something, I might feel differently. But listen, I'm getting into a, a boxing ring, as funny as that sounds, and fighting on Saturday night. So I'm not kind of getting into all the hoopla and stuff. But I, I know the people who are – I have 10 guest passes, and they all are all very excited for Justin Bieber and some of the other people. <laughs> and seeing the background you've come from in mixed martial arts, it's very different to the boxing fight. And – and you I know that you're a very chilled out person. Do you actually dislike Jake Paul? I would say I'm more indifferent to Jake. I, I, th I think there's a part of me that still thinks what he's doing is kind of an, an, an act or, you know, a show he puts on. Um, you know, I'd say if, if who he acts like is his real person, then, yeah, he's probably kind of a shit person. Um, but, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's just an act. And if you would, so but even, even wait, hold on, even if he was a shit person, I guess I would still be pretty indifferent to that. I mean, there's a lot of shit people in the world. And if you were to win on Saturday, a lot of people would thank you because there's a lot of hatred towards Jake Paul. <laughs> would you prefer, although it does sound very strange, would you prefer to win uh, on Saturday than the lose to Jorge Masvidal in the manner you did? Well, I sorry, what, re, re, that was kind of a confusing question. Can you say it one more time? Would you prefer to win on Saturday night and have a lot of praise from people who dislike Jake Paul, or yeah. would you prefer of that win over Jorge Masvidal? Mm, that's good. Well, I, I would pick, obviously, to, if I could rewind history to beat Masvidal, because if I beat Masvidal, I was fighting for the UFC title, and that was pretty much the only belt in mixed martial arts that I didn't win. So um, I would obviously reverse that. All right. Thanks very much. Next, I have Theo Saloon. Theo. Appreciate you for showering. I know we can't smell you, but you look clean, and that's nice. Well, actually, you know what? I don't wear deodorant. I don't wear deodorant, and I don't have body odor. So, um, you know, even though my hair might be messy, you you will never ever smell me because body odor doesn't exist on me. All right, that's good to know. For, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. That's the truth. You can you can ask my wife. I'll have to. All right, uh, maybe if we get her up next. Um, okay. But uh, so my question kind of just, uh, you know, you mentioned the hoopla and not thinking of it as an event. Obviously, you're very uh, experienced, you know, with, uh, you know, pre-match trash talk and stuff. But I'm wondering, mm -hmm. like, is it, have you noticed another level to kind of like this, I guess you could call it, uh, with social media and going up against an influencer um who's so present on social media no I, I haven't i actually think you know i we should probably have our contracts reversed you know i'm sure jake's getting some type of pay-per-view bonus and i'm carrying the fucking promotion of this fight jake ain't promoting shit but uh, you go look go look at the fight on tv jake's got fifty thousand views and i got 1.2 million um you know triller maybe they can send me a couple million dollar bonus afterwards because I, I the, the promotion of this fight is squarely on my shoulders jake's not doing his job so so you'd say he's not talking enough trash in advance uh yeah not talking enough trash and the trash he does talk it's very poor all right next we have boxing social aims here for boxing social in association with betford how are you doing ben you're all right i'm doing pretty well Good, good to hear. Uh, you fought in your recent fights. Well, it will be Jake Paul coming at the weekend, and you've had Jorge Masvidal in the past. Two big personalities. Out of the two, who would you say has been harder to deal with? Deal, deal with in what way? Uh, mentally, in terms of approaching the fight, everything encompassed in like dealing with the fight in yeah, general. I, I kind of deal with every. I kind of deal with everyone the same way. I try to try to make it as similar as possible every single fight, and that's uh, I mean, same same with this week. You said uh, as well, uh, leading up to this fight, this is essentially for you a one and done, but there's a small chance that you could continue fighting on. Can you give me an example of what that small chance means in fight terms? Like who would have to be in the picture <laughs> for you to fight on? Yeah, I don't really intend to box after Saturday night, but no, it's 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 not a it's not a who question. It's a how much question. Is Chill going to recognize that I'm going to sell him a million pay-per-views and cut me, you know, a Conor McGregor type check for the next one? Because if they do, then I, I would consider doing it again. And if they don't, I, I love coaching wrestling and podcasting. That's kind of my passion in life. I'll probably just go and do that. Well, a Conor McGregor-like check would include Conor McGregor, right? Oh, uh, I can't imagine the UFC. Uh, uh, well, Conor's a significantly better boxer than myself and obviously Jake Paul as well. 
Um, I would love to fight Conor McGregor in mixed martial arts, but again, I'm, I'm going to be retired. And yeah, I just don't really see all that happening. I'm just saying, you asked me how I would come out of, how I would do this again and how I would do this again is if they, if they give me a very large amount of money. You have a weight on your shoulders uh, from the people really? who- I don't who, feel it. Well, from the people who really dislike Jake Paul, they, they count on you to count him out of the boxing game. Do you realize that feeling from some of the fans? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly think I think most fans are more invested in the result of this uh, result of this bout than I am. I mean, for me, uh, I think actually the biggest negative comes from winning because if I beat Jake Paul's ass, I'm going to be like world famous, and I ain't really trying to be world famous. Um, like I said, I'm trying to coach wrestling in a podcast, and, and that that's really it. So you know, the result of the bout on Saturday night, obviously, I'd, I'd like to win, but I don't really think it changes my life a whole lot either way. You mentioned investments there. Someone who's invested heavily in this, kind of interestingly, is Dana White is putting down a million on you. Um, I've, yes. I've, what's your reaction to that million? Uh, and do you appreciate that support from Dana? Yeah, it's it's good to have that support. And, you know, Jake Paul is tremendous in the fact that he he even made Dana White like me, which, man, that's, that's, that's years. That took years to make it happen. He made it happen. So good job, Jake Paul. And finally, look, you, you've had, um, you know, your injuries in the past, the hip most notoriously. Are you as injury-free as you can be coming into this fight? Can we see the best Ben Askren we expect to see coming into this fight? Uh, I'm as healthy as I have been for a while, yes. But obviously, I'm not, I, I can't stand it when, like, so I'm 36. Say, athletes in their late 30s say, this is the best I've ever been. I'm like, bullshit. Like, <laughs> give me give me 24-year-old myself back again. I'd, I'd love to have that. Uh, but I, I am injury free and I feel great. So I'm ready to fight on Saturday night. Great. Next we have Shaquille Majori. Um, all right. First, Ben, when you look at the metrics for this fight, whether it's you on Food Truck Diaries or you on Logan Paul's podcast, it's amazing. The traffic isn't terrific. I know you got into this fight mostly just to beat someone up for an easy pay payday, but. Are you starting to see the long-term benefits of this in terms of growing your audience for things like your podcast? Well, yeah, yes, my audience is growing, and I've already commented that I'm, I'm carrying the approach to this fight, and Jake Paul's not doing his job. But I don't, I don't want to be famous. Uh, yeah, my audience is growing like crazy, and the numbers are, you know, like you said, Food Truck Diaries. I think someone showed me it's the second most watched Food Truck Diaries every ever i'm already really high up on the logan paul podcast for being you know one of the most watched ever and it's been one week I, and i you know what i think i think it all points to and i don't want to be famous but it points to the fact that there's so many not authentic people in the world and when someone's just real with them when someone just really says how he feels from the bottom of his heart people appreciate that and i i think that's kind of the biggest thing that's coming through is you know, people thought maybe it was my it was bravado or something. No, I'm I'm just being me, and I've been me for the last 20 years. And we don't see a lot of real people in the world, and the authenticity people appreciate. Right, thanks very much. Next up is Donna Corby. Hi, Ben. Uh, yeah, I'm there's surprised. There's a bit of a delay on my end here. I was watching the Impulsive episode, oh. and at the end, Jake <laughs> puts out this video. And oh, so bad. Sorry. Move back. We'll get we'll get back to Shaquille after. Oh man. Donna. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that was going to be a great question, Shaquille, so hold it. Um, but Ben, uh, I'm surprised I'm able to ask you this question. I thought it would be the first one asked. Were you were you playing everyone with the sparring footage going into this so that you could stun everyone at the open workouts yesterday? Because that's what I'm reading on social media. People are, are amazed at how good you looked yesterday. Yeah. No, no, I actually am not, right? But And again, this, this goes to the authentic point. When I signed the Jake Paul fight, I was sitting on the fucking couch for 15 months. But when I got done with the UFC um, in October of 2019, I remember I tried to go do some private lessons and it was just like literally too painful and I, and I couldn't do it. So I had been doing some yoga and some bicycle. And then after my surgery, I did nothing. And so literally I started putting out footage of me hitting nothing for 15 months, being not working out for 15 months. And it was, yeah, it was, it was not pretty. And I just knew I had faith in myself that if I put my mind to it for 11 weeks, it's going to get a lot, a lot better. And it got a lot better. And then you combine that with the fact that I've never actually focused on boxing and I'm a quick learner and I, I'm, I tend to be good at those type of things when I put my mind to it. Um, yeah, obviously for, for what you're looking at, you got a lot better product in week 11 than you did in week one. 
Uh, Jake has made your wife a bit of an internet celebrity. He's also, of course, uh, made you even more famous than, uh, than than you were prior to this. Is there any part of you that's that's win or lose going to be saying thank you, Jake, for the hundreds of thousands of dollars? Thank you, Jake, for helping my wife sell more houses. Uh, ultimately, are you going to be thankful towards Jake when this is all said and done? No, I, I don't. I don't feel that way at all. Um, again, I, I, I will repeat this. This is probably the fourth time. I, I am trying to get famous. Um, I think that might be the most negative thing that comes from me winning on Saturday night. It's just not a place I want to be in my life. Um, and, and, you know, it's actually, I, I, yeah, I am. I'm feeling a little bit differently when I go on the street, I get stopped 10 times and I'm kind of like a little bit antisocial. <laughs> so I actually, I actually don't love it. Um, you know, I got my, uh, 11 acres in my house and I have no neighbors and I, you know, I go outside and I piss in my yard if I want to, and no one, no one talks to me and everyone leaves me alone. Like, and then I go coach my wrestling academies. That, that's what I love to do. And so, um, no, I probably will not be saying thank you. Maybe, uh, my, maybe, maybe thank you to Triller for making my bank account much larger. Yes. My last question uh, is: If people were going to bet on this fight, what would you tell them to uh, go to the bookmaker and say? So I actually think betting on this fight is uh, is very risky. Which hey, some people love risk, and and I think a lot of people just want to say I bet on this fight because they want to have an opinion one way or the other. But compared to like for me, just as a gambler. You know, the fights that I want to bet on are the ones where I'm like, dude, I've seen these dudes fight 20 times. I know exactly what they're going to do. I understand both their strengths and both their weaknesses, and I understand how they fit together, right? When I look at MMA fights that I I, I don't actually gamble that much anymore. I used to gamble quite a bit, and I, I would win quite a bit. Um, and But this one, there's so many unknowns. There's literally so many unknowns. So if you're gambling, you just love to gamble, which, you know, hey, gambling makes everything more fun, so why not? Okay, great. Thanks so much. Next, we have the great Damon Martin. Oh, the great Damon. I know Damon Martin. I know I saw him in Ohio one time in like 2014. <laughs> hey, Ben. Uh, What's up? We, when we did our interview right after the fight was announced, I, I kind of joked with you about wrestling Jake Paul, and you said that wouldn't be fun because it would last like 11 seconds. Did you see yesterday Jake actually yes. said he wanted to wrestle you? So uh, will you accept that challenge, and how quickly would that fight go? I, I cannot figure out, uh, you know, I always, always, always try to think of what is someone's angle on this? I can't figure out what his angle is. I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, if he wants to wrestle, we can wrestle. I mean, I beat up, I, I can go wrestle really, really high level people still and be very, very competitive, if not beat them. Um, the notion that I couldn't pin a, a bad high school, I mean, let's just put it, he wasn't even good at high school wrestling. The notion that I couldn't pin him in 20 seconds is, is hilarious. Um, so I, I don't really know. I don't really know what he's angling at there. And then, but the one thing it does make me think is makes me think, which I've, I've kind of always thought, and this I guess would be further proof that he he realizes he doesn't have a future in boxing because if your goal was to be a great boxer, you're not going to take a couple months off to wrestle somebody. Um, you know, I, and I just think back to my time and. And I'm a, I'm a world-class athlete. And he's Jake Paul. Um, I remember my time in 2010, I tried to both wrestle and do mixed martial arts as in the Bellator tournament. And it, su it sucked. And I was not optimal in either one because I was splitting my time. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't understand the angle there. Uh, ben, when you started this training camp, you know, when you were striking for MMA, you were striking to set up takedowns. You were striking to get to your mm -hmm. wrestling. Uh, but you said, that, you know, three months, you would have time to, to to learn and adapt and grow. How much do you yes. feel like you have learned and adapted and grown, you know, in your boxing over these last three months? Well, you, you guys saw yesterday, right? I mean, read read the comments on that video. There's millions of views. Go read the comments. Yeah, people saw it. And that, that was kind of that was my, my whole premise is I understand that I suck at this, but I understand – I'm a world-class athlete, and, and despite the fact that I don't look like it, right? Sometimes can't judge a book by the cover, and that I'm a world-class learner. I understand how to learn things really well, and I just give me 11 weeks at trying this, and I'm going to be way better. And that's what you guys saw yesterday. And last one, you know, during your mixed martial arts career, you faced off and, and had, you know, kind of fun trash talking battles with a lot of people. I think going into this, because Jake kind of became famous through YouTube and social media, everyone thought, oh, well, this will be fun. He'll engage with Ben. It'll be a fun back and forth. But as you said, it's been a, a little bit one sided. Have you been surprised that maybe he hasn't been better at the trash talk or, or, or did you just kind of expect that when you actually uh, got to know a little bit more about him? 
Uh, yeah, fr- frankly, it's, it's been a bloodbath. If we're talking trash talk, it's it's you know it's not even a ten eight. It's more like a ten seven or a guy. We, I don't think we've seen a ten six in mixed martial arts, but something like that. And it's just this guy has. Um, he only picks the lowest hanging fruit because his audience average age is thirteen and a half. And, you know, like the lowest hanging fruit just isn't going to work against me. You're going to have to come with something creative or something intelligent. He just has lacked the ability to do so. Hey, Ben, this is Gabriel with Cage Side Press. Um, you showered for us, but you didn't bring the fancy robe today. Did you forget it at home? It's, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in my room. It's uh, n- nice and comfy. Uh, to ask you, um, I think one of the things that's become very apparent is your ability to handle a lot of personalities throughout your career, whether it's talking with Jake, talking with Jorge, you know, and what have you. What is your advice to fighters? Because uh, they, they get that a lot. Like, you got to talk better to sell the fight and make more money. What's yeah. your advice to guys who are not as good at handling the pre-fight talk? So I don't want to say necessarily have to trash talk, but you, you have to have a personality, right? There has to be something that people are interested in in order to tune in your fight. The fight is just not enough, or in, in a few cases it is, right? Uh, but but uh, the majority of the time, it's not. Um, so create, create some type of personality for yourself. And then I would say on the second side is like, I, you know, I grew up, Muhammad Ali was my favorite athlete. And so, you know, he used psychological warfare to his advantage. And I can tell you unequivocally, whether it was my wrestling career, my mixed martial arts career, is that, yeah, when the other guy's really angry or emotional, it's so beneficial. I mean, it really, really helps a lot. And, you know, actually, I, was, I kind of told someone that night and they, they pointed out, which is an obvious play, is Jose Aldo versus... Um, uh, Conor McGregor, like Conor was so far under his skin. And that, that was the reason the fight was so easy for him is he made Jose mad. So it, it, not only would it be beneficial from a promotional standpoint, but it's actually beneficial from a competition standpoint. And so, yeah, go, go get started figuring it out. It sounds like it might be Eddie Alvarez who'll be the next MMA star jumping over to box somebody for Triller. I was just wondering, yeah. what are your thoughts on Eddie possibly getting in there to box Oscar De La Hoya in June? Uh, well, I love Eddie because he's a Bitcoiner, um, and I, I felt bad about his last fight because I, I didn't agree with the referee's call at all. But I actually heard it's going to be Tyron Woodley. That's what I heard. I mean, what advice do you have for him? Obviously, you guys have been really close. What yeah. is your advice for him? Tyron's a, Tyron's a much better boxer than myself. I don't got any damn advice for him. You, you, don't, you don't try to give advice to someone that you're worse than. <laughs> You'd say that you don't like being famous and everything. Can I ask why? Because I think a lot of people would say, Ben Askren, you're kind of pretty good at being in the public eye. You're into oh, God. That, that's, what, that's, what my wife, that's what my wife says, too. She says, like... You know, I know you don't want this, but um, you you seem to thrive in that environment. <laughs> and it, to me, it, it feels like like a wrestling locker room where you guys, you know, everyone's just kind of talking shit and, you know, you roll off your back or some guy gets bothered. So then you keep antagonizing him. Um, I don't know. Like, I just don't have the desire. And, I, you know, um, I, I guess in the case that I could give positive, you know, I think like I just I have I have a quote and I think it should I should probably trademark it at some point. Uh, but d- don't tie your ego to your outcome. And I said that on a Steve O podcast. And you know, a handful of people have commented, I've seen that said something like, Hey, that really affected the way I think about things. And so, hey, if I could affect people in a positive way like that, I, I would love it. But I I kind of I think I'm borderline autistic actually, and I have very specified interests, and I can't stand talking to people. About um, about things that don't really matter to me, and I, and I know it's really bad. I, my my wife gets upset with me about it, and, and she probably should, right? It's fair. Um, and so when people want to come up and talk to me about stuff, it's just like I don't want to talk. I want to think about what I want to think about, or I want to go coach wrestling. I want to do what I want to do, and I don't I don't want to talk to strangers. I know I sound like a total asshole when I say that, but I'm telling you my feelings. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to be able to go to the restaurant and sit down and eat and not have anyone come take a picture and listen. So, you know, I know I sound like an asshole, but I'm telling you my feelings. And that's how it is. I completely understood. My final question, uh, Ben, who's the bigger problem child, Jake Paul or Sean O'Malley? Oh, that's a good question. Oh man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know them well enough to really comment on that. I probably have to do a more thorough research of their histories. Okay, next up is Boxing Social. 
Hey Ben, I just had a couple more questions uh, for you. Uh, yes, you're, you're in this position with this fight because you're fighting Jake Paul, who's built himself this uh, YouTube empire as such. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that heel hustle that Jake has been going on for the last few years? Do you respect that, and do you think there are lessons that fighters like yourself who are coming up should take lessons from Jake to get to where he is right now? What What was the word you said? Heel Heel hoss? The heel hustle. Like being heel the heel. hustle. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah. never heard of that exact uh, terminology. Um, no, you were saying, uh, no, I, I said earlier, I think it's really important for fighters to um, understand that the social media and the trash talk and the personality, it's, it's very, very important to progressing your career. And really, when, when you think about it, um, you know, I was talking to someone, a baseball player yesterday. It's like, I said, I said, this guy doesn't have a big social media following. He's like, well, it doesn't matter. If his batting average is good and he hits some home runs, he's, he's going to get paid a whole bunch of money. You know, and that's true with other sports. In MMA and boxing and whatever the fuck we're doing this weekend, celebrity fighting, it's, it's just not true. It's like literally, if you can bring a bunch of eyeballs, they're going to pay you a bunch of money. And if you don't understand that, you're a moron and someone should hit you in the head with a tack hammer. Uh, you said you've been watching a lot of boxing in the lead up to this and looking to replicate some of the of some legendary fighters uh who have you watched and who have you been trying to replicate i, I really liked how tyson uh bit that dude so maybe i'll try to bite jake any other fighters you've been watching no it's just that that's it and just finally from you can i get your prediction please on the, for the fight night oh <laughs> uh, i seventh seventh on tk we'll stick with that brilliant all the best then Thank, thanks yes. All right, and finally, we're going to circle back around to Shaquille for his awesome question. Hey, Shaquille. All right, let's try this again. Thank you, Ben. When you were on Logan Paul's podcast, they played that Jake Paul clip, and everyone in yeah. the room seemed uncomfortable, yeah, uh, even his real. older brother. Have you noticed, as we go closer to this fight, that the public favor is swaying even more so towards you? I mean, from the first time we did anything no one likes the guy i i was blown away like i i'd never seen not even not even as many people hate colby covington like i have literally never seen anything like it so i can't say it's swaying more because i think it was swayed in the beginning wait i'm not done i want to i want to say can i say one more thing is the mic going on and ben, ben you can say whatever you want okay good listen I intend. I fully intend to box on saturday night but jake paul is is telling lies when he says my purse will be deducted for me doing a non MMA, a non box move, that's just not true. He made it up, and I would just appreciate all you guys write that uh, he's telling lies. Peace.